Okay, well, let's learn about the endocrine system. This uh, presentation will give us an overview of the endocrine system, and I'm also going to contrast the endocrine system with the exocrine system, if you will, exocrine secretions versus endocrine secretions. The endocrine system could also be called the study of endocrinology. And of course, you know that the uh, ending L-O-G-Y means the study of. So this word literally means the study of hormones because hormones are endocrine substances. So endocrinology means the study of hormones. Okay, now let's explain a little bit, little bit more about exocrine versus endocrine glands. So it's very important to know the distinction between these two glands. And uh, of course, you got the pause button. You can uh, pause this and write this all down. But the, the key is glands are collection or a collection of secretory epithelial cells. They're going to secrete something. Okay, that's a key here for all glands. And this says that if they have a duct, let me get this on the right screen here. If they have a duct where their secretion goes to a surface via a duct after the secretion is made, then you would have an exocrine gland. And then this statement says that if they don't have a duct, but they're still making something, some secretion, then the cell itself exports the molecule, and those tissues are called endocrine glands. And I say tissues or glands because sometimes there's just a group of cells that are making a hormone, but you couldn't really dissect them out and hold them in your hand and say, look it, I have a gland like you could of the adrenal gland, for example. Some of the cells are like just diffuse and they make hormones and you'll see this later in another presentation. Okay, so that is the, defi the two definitions uh, for exocrine and endocrine. But let me get rid of that and bring another nice little table that somebody wrote here and let me explain this a little bit because it is all goes to learning. Okay, exocrine glands. Remember, they have a duct, and of course you have the pause button, and this has an example of sebaceous glands. Those are glands in your skin that produce an oil-like substance. Then there's salivary glands, which is also an endocrine gland, or sorry, exocrine gland. I'm on exocrine now. Sorry, salivary glands are exocrine. And the buccal cavity is your mouth. And then another good example is gastric glands that are in the walls of the stomach make, for example, hydrochloric acid and secrete it to the lumen via a duct. Now on the right side here, endocrine glands. They don't have a duct, do not. And hence, they are ductless glands. They discharge their secretions into the bloodstream after a cell releases it by exocytosis. So hormones are released into the interstitial space, it's called. Then they diffuse to a capillary, and we'll see that. And there's all kinds of endocrine glands, a few named here. We'll get to that later. So here's a nice little picture I like to use to contrast this. It gets a little fuzzy when I enlarge it too much, but that's OK. Uh, exocrine gland. And you see there's a misspelling there. C-R-I-N-E is how the crin is spelled. An exocrine gland versus an endocrine gland. Here we have cells making some secretion, and it's going to the skin surface in this example, right? But you know what I'd like to do is I would like to cross out skin. So you can see how I'm doing that. And then I would like to substitute the word in free surface. So I can do that right like that. So this free surface might be the lining of the stomach, the intestine. For example, the liver makes bile and it comes out into the lumen of the small intestine. So there's a lot of things that are made and secreted in a duct 
inside the body that you never see on the skin. So that's why I like to say free surface. And then on this side, the endocrine tissue, they can be just a number of cells. It doesn't have to be some gland that you could dissect out and hold in your hand. It can be just a diffuse set of cells that are making something. Those secretions or chemicals are put out into this white surface here, which would be called interstitial space, and then it would diffuse into a blood vessel and then be carried away to a distant target tissue. And we're going to find out what that word means later. Okay, so here's another nice little drawing that uh, those great artists can do. I can't even draw a stick figure, so that's why I hardly ever draw on these things. But you can see that there's some cell over here producing a hormone. Now, this is going to be only talking about the endocrine system here. So these blue dots are some hormone. And they're going to be released from the cell by exocytosis. That's E-X-O-C-Y-T-O-S-I-S, -O -O exocytosis. Diffuse through the interstitial space. Go into a capillary because capillaries are leaky. They can have things come in and out. And then it's going to circulate, as you can see in this drawing, the arrow blood only circulates one way in any one vessel and it's going to go to a target cell so let's look at this one up here where the laser pointer is this hormone is going to attach to a receptor on the cell surface this hormone over here probably a different hormone is going to get into the cell membrane and bind to receptors either in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus so here's an example this hormone up here would be like insulin insulin works this way it's a protein hormone whereas down here this could be testosterone steroids tend to have receptors in the cytoplasm or the nucleus